Hello East Texas, I'm Danny Mogul with the Tyler Morning Telegraph. It's been 10 years since the Space Shuttle Columbia broke apart over East Texas, killing the astronauts aboard and leaving a lasting scar in the hearts of our nation. Some of us who covered the tragedy are sharing our memories, both in print and video. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Columbia's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multitude of national and international space research experiments. The shuttle in the left bank with wings angled about uh, 57 degrees to horizontal. And Columbia Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time. Search and rescue teams have been mobilized to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Kenneth Dean was one of the reporters who helped tell the story. Wow. Yeah, my, my first instance of realizing that something terrible had gone wrong was that sound. You know, it was like a woo, 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 and an explosion. Some people reported hearing a series of explosions. Right, right. There was a series of explosions, but it, sh it shook my house. And, and wow. of course, I went outside. I'm, look I'm fully expecting to see a, a tank battery that, I, that was not far from my house. I really expected to see it on fire, uh, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I didn't. And of course, I did what a lot of people did. I just kind of scanned around, and as I did, I looked up and saw this huge brown, like vapor trail oh, really? going you can across. Oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I'll never forget. Um, we had a, a photographer and I out there, and we came upon these three guys that come running out of the woods, and you know, we didn't know what these guys wanted, but they said we found something. So we went ahead and followed them in there, and there was the nose, nose cone, cone. Yeah, of I the space that. shuttle. And you know, we took pictures of it and we reported it. And then the next mm -hmm. day, NASA had just cordoned off the whole area. Yeah. It, it was well. a it was an emotional time for uh, the the nation, and as our headline yeah. says, a nation mourns. Right. Dave Barry, editor of the paper, was at home when the tragedy occurred. He recounts the story of hearing the shuttle break up and what it was like in the newsroom that day. For that morning, what was the first thing that you realized that morning, that early Saturday morning? Well, to be honest, I was asleep, and yeah. uh, the, the the boom shook our house, and uh, my wife came running in and grabbed me and said, "Something's exploded." We ran outside, and uh, by then the coyotes were howling. It was really unusual. There was a crackling noise still in the sky, and you could see this dirty, hazy, smoky trail across the sky. Did you still live west of town at that yes. time? And uh, we came in, turned the TV on to see what was yeah. going on, and uh, the first thing we saw was they were reporting the shuttle was expected for a landing any minute, and then within a few minutes it was overdue, and we knew something was really wrong. Talk about, we ran some of the most amazing photos from Dr. Right. Scott Lieber. Talk about how that all came about. Well, I, I don't know exactly the time. It was probably shortly after you and I got in and got everybody dispatched out. Yes. And we got a phone call. Um, right. And it was, uh, the, the call came from Dr. Scott Lieberman who said, I took pictures of it this morning. I was in my yard. I was trying to do uh, photos of the shuttle passing over. We said, come on in. Let's see what you've got. And he trotted right on down here. And, uh, and we plugged his, plugged his camera in. We downloaded his photos on the screen. And the minute we saw him, we said, oh, my God, he's got something. Yeah, really you good. were one of the first to see these photos. Right. And, and we, knew, we knew right then that he had the shot. It, yes. was, it was a shot of a lifetime. Yes. He had the shuttle disintegrating over East Texas and yeah. falling to the ground. And so um, immediately I asked him, I said, are you offering these to us? Of course, there was a little bit of a selfish interest. I wanted yes. those in our paper. And he said, definitely, I want, I want you to have them. He says, but my goal, and he kind of smiled, and he said, my goal would be on the, time, be on the cover of Time Magazine. And I said, yeah. I think we can help you with that, but let us call the Associated Press 
and see if we can't get you on more than just that. I said, I think this is going to go on fronts of lots of newspapers. Dr. Scott Lieberman of Tyler witnessed the breakup of Columbia while shooting photos and video of the reentry. His photos appeared in newspapers worldwide. He gave us his thoughts and how the experience changed his life. I'm here with Dr. Scott Lieberman, the man who took these iconic photos of Columbia falling to earth. What were you doing that morning? Well, um, most people have heard the story, but I, I have been a fan of the space program uh, for a long time and, uh, and a bit of a photography uh, bug. And, yes. And uh, I knew that they were going to, if they, if they went for reentry on their first available orbit, that they were going to be coming over East Texas on their approach to the Kennedy Space Center right. at about 8 o'clock in the morning. And so, uh, having witnessed a, a, an approach a couple of years earlier over Texas, and I knew it was a, a spectacular site, I finally had a decent camera, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to get a picture so of So you of knew that, that you'd be able to see something. Yes. We're, we're basically, were we talking about a very small speck in the sky, or is it Well, actually, a bit more no. Than that? It, it, it was more than that. Uh, okay. the, the first reentry that we had seen a few years earlier actually occurred at twilight, and it was absolutely spectacular. It was a ball of fire rolling across the sky, and, uh, and the contrail w was basically a green glowing, you know, uh, smoke trail. So, I mean, it was right. like a, like a slow-moving, fantastic firework. Uh, I knew this would be different. It was earlier in, it was in a more of a daylight part of the day. And right. I, I knew it would appear differently, but I knew it would be visible, that the, the, the spacecraft, the, the fireball on the front, and the trail, the contrail would be uh, visible to the naked eye. Okay, so you, you got it. In focus, you got your camera up there. We basically went into the backyard and we waited and uh, we had a, a video camera and the still camera. Yes. And uh, I handed the video camera to my wife and, and uh, she started uh, to record and uh, I was shooting both wide angle and zoom lens. At what point did you feel like something had happened or well, was happening? Or? Well, initially I didn't. Uh, looking through the camera, you see this bright fireball and your, your eyes kind of focused on, on the main thing and you didn't see the other components to this. Now my wife was looking at the, at the LCD screen on the video camera yes. and she says on the thing, it's supposed to look like it's breaking up like that. And, and I wasn't quite sure what she meant by that. I mean, it looked okay, you know, just to the, the naked eye through the camera. I mean, even, even, you know, with the zoom lens, I wasn't up that tight and close, yes. you know, through the eye side of the camera. And, and it still just, you know, formed a single contrail across the sky. So just looking at the sky, you didn't see anything that, you know, was grotesquely abnormal. Um, mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it the story didn't change until about three or four minutes later when the sonic boom, which should have come in as two discrete thumps, came in as a really loud increasing sound over a minute and then decreasing sound over almost another minute. I go back and I crop in the pictures and I take a much closer look and that's when I see what you see in the pictures. Multiple fireballs coming in, not a single mm. spacecraft anymore, but yeah. really um, evidence that, uh, that we were looking at a vehicle that had been disrupted. My goal was I knew you guys would want the picture, and, right. and I, I felt that Tyler Paper should have it. You guys had suggested, well, we should show this to the Associated Press, yes. and uh, and that would certainly be the way to distribute it. And I said, well, that made perfect sense to me. You know, I I, I know from the Associated Press, let's uh, let's get the images to them. And when we say that these photos appeared in in almost all the papers around the world. We're not, that's not hyperbole. That's, it's, that's a pretty it's, accurate it's, description. The, the Associated Press figured approximately 1,400 newspapers ran with this on their front pages within the first 24 hours. Um, they felt that the that the reach of these images were 2.4 billion people in the first yeah, news cycle. Yeah, that's amazing. It, What are your lasting memories of that whole experience? Um, I think my, you know, of course, the trauma and the tragedy of it is, I shared that with everyone. Mm -hmm. But I think the, um, you can appreciate, I guess, maybe not enjoy, you don't ever enjoy this kind of a story, but you appreciate the work that went into it yes. from the staff. Uh, I was never so proud of a staff of people, of a group of people that came together, put their heads down, put aside the, the trauma and the grief for long enough to do the job. And they did an excellent job. Uh, there are a lot of other journalists in the country who did great jobs too, but I think our, our little small group pulled together 
and did an outstanding job that day. And, and uh, I've, I've been. This is probably one of those stories that I'm most proud of yeah, because right. of that.